Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another BT Neanderthal video. Today, we are going to be covering the Blizzard Sorceress and everything that this has to offer. We're going to be following this guide here, uh, written by me on Max Roll, the Blizzard Sorceress Guide. So, with that being said, I have a very similar character to this character. And, you know... Check out the guide here if you haven't already, link in the description, and then, you know, we'll, we'll cover all this. Basically, there's an introduction here telling you what is, uh, you know, what's great, what's not great about this, and then, honestly, there's mostly just pluses with the Blizzard Sorceress. Um, and then, it does also assume that you are level 75, and we'll be talking about more around the playstyle of 75 plus. So, kind of relevant to this guide. Uh, we have the pros and cons. This is like basically the best ladder starter you could ever have in Diablo 2. It's kind of ridiculous how much stronger it is. Um, but it does have difficulty against cold immunes and things like this. You know, it's got the, the negatives here. But you can read that for yourself. So, things that we're going to be covering... Our gameplay. Let's go in here real quick and just show you what a Blizzard Sorceress can do. So we're gonna go to the one, one of the, f one of my favorite places, actually, to farm with Blizzard Sorceress. I know that some people are like, oh my god, it's not ancient tunnels, but like I actually really like killing Diablo with a Blizzard Sorceress. And as you see here, we have telekinesis, which works fantastic for the seals. We can just pick out monsters and once we have like a super dangerous situation like this you can just kite mobs all the way through your blizzard just like that and drop all the good loot right now we come across this guy right uh the sace lord the sace he's always cold immune so this guy you're gonna need well a mercenary that either just one taps him like you did there um at later stages of the game you can use fireball and then once you have Conviction Aura, then that Fireball is actually doing a decent amount of damage against him. So, it is kind of cool. And as you're a higher level, obviously get more points into that. You can Seal Pop with the Sorceress pretty easily because of the, the fast breakpoints on Teleport. Like, look at how fast we're going. The Sorceress is very fast. That's the thing that makes this the best starter, honestly, is Blizzard, in general, is a very high damage skill, even without any gear. It just gets stronger with gear, for sure, but it's very strong without gear. And then on top of that, the break points and the speed at which you can move around is just lightning fast, right? And the thing about Diablo 2 is there's certain farming spots or farming routes and farming areas you want to hit up. Like, say, for example, in... Uh, catacombs we want to hit up in Daryl. Two, two common places uh, are in Daryl and Mephisto at the very start of a ladder because those things, those bosses, are really easy to get to with a sorceress that can teleport quickly and be able to make some good progress. Now, as far as the skill tree goes, real quick, like I said, we're going to be following this guide here. As far as the skill tree goes, we do have this, right? We have one point into warmth, static, telekinesis, teleport, frozen armor, cold mastery, fire mastery, and frozen nova, or frost nova. Um, and then we max out all these in order. And I'll just show you, like, there's a slider here as well if you haven't seen that before. So in this guide, it's, like, super helpful if you haven't seen that before to see exactly where I would want to put my points all the way to, like, level 99. So... Again, the main focus really is like 75 to 99 here, which is pretty much only fire stuff because you max out pretty early. But nonetheless, this is still really solid. So, and that that's what we got here. So if we look, we got one base point here, and then we want to make sure that we max out Blizzard, Cold Mastery, and stuff like that. Now, when you're leveling or when you don't have as many plus skills, you can put up a few more points in the cold mastery. Maybe get it to like minus 50%. But 
but like all you'll really need after you have plus skills is minus 100% enemy cold resist like pretty much ever uh, especially when you're confined with conviction to break some cold immunes like it's helpful um, you know you can do that as well now there's two different things I'm actually going to run another chaos run to show you a little bit of extra stuff so we're currently on single player with this character and there's two different things the ice blast and the ice and the glacial spike okay these are two different attacks and they're both very important so the main attacks that we're actually using on our left click here are ice blast glacial spike and we also have fireball hotkeyed right so we got ice blast we got glacial spike and got fireball now, these things, as I said before, Fireball is used for, like, the immunities here. Especially in combined with Conviction. So we static, you know, say, like, the Sace down or something like that. And then we use Fireball as if he's not fire immune. Now, there's two specific scenarios. Ice Blast does more damage to single target and is not an AoE skill. But it freezes, right? It freezes the monsters. And then we have Glacial Spike, which is an AoE skill but it does a little bit less damage. Now, say in this scenario, right, we had two monsters and they're both frozen. Well, I guess there's more than one. Okay, actually, let's give a better example. Hold on. Let's get a better example, get more monsters. So we got a bunch of Venom Lords here, right? If I was just attacking with Ice Blast, then I don't have the AoE of crowd control, right? Ice ice uh, Glacial Spike is really good because of the crowd control and it freezes for a long time. As you can see, we got 11 seconds with all the, the points that we have in it. But it's also, it travels quickly and you can keep things CC'd. In addition to that, once you have about three monsters that you're hitting the exact same time, it out damages what Ice Blast would have done if you individually attack them. Right? So if I just did Ice Blast and there's three monsters, then it's better for me, as far as damage output goes, to actually use uh, Glacial Spike. So an in we can like teleport right on top of things and just use Glacial Spike because, because of that AoE. I'll show you more examples of that, like right here. I just right on top of these monsters, Glacial Spike. Now, this is not necessarily the playstyle you actually want to play with Blizzard. I'm just showcasing that if you get yourself in a hairy situation, that you can use Glacial Spike to get yourself out of that. Also, something that isn't really talked about that much is teleporting and how this actually works. So, because the Sorceress is one of the characters that just starts with teleport, there is this... It takes a certain amount of frames, like your, your cast rate, right, which you can see. Right now we're at 105, which is where I typically recommend to, to sit at. It takes, you know, X amount of frames to teleport. Now, with that being said, uh, in that time that you try to teleport, you could get interrupted or thrown into hit recovery or something like that, right? When you have lower life. For example, this is a very strong character. It's similar to the standard variant, like I said, that we see at the beginning of the guide here. Um, but, like, what you want to do, say you get yourself in hit recovery, you actually want to walk away. Well, I got Oculus right now. Like, you want to walk away and then try to teleport. You don't want to just hold the button down because that's how you get yourself like permanently stuck in bad scenarios. But you can be very aggressive. One thing I'd actually recommend is if you actually want to get better at the Sorceress, is just try, like Blizzard Sorceress specifically, try and run in Chaos Sanctuary. That will challenge you and that will make you a better uh, Blizzard Sorceress player. Like because there's so many different scenarios where you actually need Glacial Spike, or uh, Glacial Spike, Ice Blast, and Fire Bolt. 
on the right side now, on the right click, we have, you know, teleport, which I told you a little bit about the teleport mechanics here. Holding the button down can work, but like if you get stuck, you want to be careful. Then we have telekinesis, which you just kind of use this anytime that you can. Like in D2R, you can actually TK portals. I'm not sure if that'll stay from both sides, which is not something that's in LOD. So TK, you can do waypoints, pick up potions, do so many little things that uh, will just save you time over, over time. Now, the other main farming spot here is actually like really the main farming spot for Roy Blizzard Sorceress is kind of the ancient tunnels. But there's so many options that you have with the Blizzard Sorceress, like I said, because we move so quickly. Now, we use Static, we use Frozen Armor, and Frozen Armor, like, just like finishing off the skills real quick, Frozen Armor makes it so that when a monster hits you, they freeze for X amount of seconds. And then we have Static, which just brings them down to X amount of life, you know, by a percentage each time you static. So it's very strong skill. In normal, it's 1%, or not 1%, it's 1 HP. In nightmare, it's like 33% of monster's health. And then in hell, it's 50%. So things we're looking for here right now is, you know, ancient tunnels. This is a very strong area for the Blizzard Sork. There we go. You can actually telekinesis that. And one thing to know, if you know map reading, if you don't, then you can go and check that out on the max roll. The chest is always to the left in the ancient tunnels. So if you're going to be farming that a lot, just go there. Um, and the main thing I actually like to do on this is not necessarily clear out the entire thing. It does depend on the player count that you're on and the setup that you use. And that's where we could talk a little bit about variants and things like that in a second here. But I want to make sure I follow the guide uh, that we have on max roll a bit so you can kind of follow along as we go. So back to the max roll guide here. We kind of talked about the skills and what are being used. Uh, you can read a little bit more about them here and some more details. You can also see the utility and the damage and where this all goes. So then as far as attributes go, we have... Uh, 156 strength. That is what we want to end up having at the end. Because Monarch, Spirit Monarch, which is the lowest strength 4 socket shield we can wear, is going to be our best in slot on pretty much every build. There are like exceptions here and there, like Hardcore uses Storm Shield, and we'll go over gear options soon. But like 156 for the standard setup is very important. We don't put any points in the dexterity. Um, Pretty much ever maybe we do add some if we want to use a hodo instead of an oculus and we have the rest into vitality after you get to the certain point when you have enough plus skills putting one point into warmth is like super strong and it helps you out with that that mana loss so that's kind of how we actually you know use our attributes now we'll go to gear options so that we can talk about this a little bit in the early game, Spirit is like the best thing you could do. And then after that, it's kind of personal preference. You know, Wizard Spike's good too. You can run with that as well. If you want to not have to worry about teleports, because Oculus... I personally like Oculus the most, which is why I recommend Oculus in our guide right here. And why I'm showcasing that. But some people don't like to deal with that. And they would rather... Be more consistent so hodo actually becomes a really good option with that scenario uh death fathom is also another option for like the damage dealers and uh spirit monarch and storm shield are like the two main things here with spirit monarch being the main thing and just in case you don't understand this we have in the teal we have the very important stats from my opinion and then we have like a header up here for the gear options. And then right here we have like other important stats. So you could read more through all this stuff if you are interested. You know, for example, we have like things here and there. But, you know, that's the gear options. As far as farming spots go, this character is just a beast. 
Mausoleum is an option. It's like very low density, but like it's also pretty safe. Everything moves slow and you can kill it. It's an 85 area, uh, which means it can drop every item in the game there. And Dariel, you know, it can do all these things. And you can check out all these farming spots. Again, the link is in the description for all this stuff. But my main two favorite things are the Chaos Sanctuary on the Blizzard Sork and Ancient Tunnels. Generally speaking, you know, but in the early stages of the ladder, I'll be running Endariel and Mephisto to just gain up that wealth. Typically, what I actually do before we move on to, like, the Mercenary, just talking about, like, ladder strategy, because this is kind of the ladder strategy character, is I start off a Blizzard Sorceress. And then I immediately just start farming Mephisto and Indariel. And kind of just let the game choose. If I'm in single player, then I can set the player count to whatever. Maybe players three. Players the players three is generally the best for kill speed and stuff like that. But uh, if not, it doesn't matter. Um, generally, I let the game kind of choose what I want to play from that point on. Right? So if something drops for a Javazon, then maybe I'll make a Javazon next. If something drops for this, maybe I'll make this next, you know. Um, but generally on ladder, what I will do, like if you're online, I will get enough currency and trade enough stuff to make sure I can get a solid smiter ready. So this character is specifically made so I can farm Mephisto and Indariel. And I'll keep farming them until I can make a nice smiter, which honestly, for me, usually only takes a day or two. Uh, like, just enough to get by to do it with relative ease. And then on top of that, if you go down here on ladder, you can kill the council members too with... Uh, usually minimal problems sometimes it can be cold immune and that's annoying so you kind of just skip those but yeah mephisto is a fantastic place to farm you can tk that portal as well to move things quicker so back to the mercenary section i guess mercenary pretty much all you need to know like if you want to see details here but pretty much all you need to know is I am currently using an infinity, again, to break some immunities. Also, just because, like, if something's a high resistance, it just helps pierce even more. And then, fortitude. This is basically giving him damage, all resistances, and survive Like, survivability and damage. And then in Daryl's Visage, same thing. We were, were using this for the damage the attack speed, the leech, and all that stuff. So, we're also using a Might Mercenary. I know it says Blessed Aim. This is a bug. So, Nightmare uh, Might Aura, which is a offensive uh, Mercenary. So, that's the one we actually use. Not Blessed Aim. As you can see, as Might Aura going around in circles. Also, another option, if you don't have Affinity or can't afford Affinity then Insight is like plenty good enough. Infinity is only a little min-max. It's not actually as big as you might think on a Blizzard Sorceress. A lot of people start off Blizzard Sorceress and then they immediately go to Lightning Sorceress uh, right after they get Infinity. Me, I don't like the playstyle. I actually prefer to play with Blizzard. I find it more fun for me. I get to be more aggressive, especially with all the different CC effects. Like I said, go into Chaos Sanctuary and do all this stuff. So, next thing. You know, just, I guess, more showcasing, I guess. Next thing we could talk about now is... We already kind of covered the play style. Which is, you know, you kind of throw a blizzard down. You can kite monsters through it. You can use, you know, your... Glacial Spike and your Ice Blast for various activities and things that you need. Static. You know, just static bosses down. Get an easy uh, High Lord's Wrath. Let's see what happens. 
Come on, High Lord's Wrath, let's go. Greetings. Nope, that's easy, no Kazan. GG. Alright. So, now we'll go to like, a couple other main things here, which is basically just the advanced stats here. We have... 385 MF on this setup. This is like the standard setup. And the thing that's special about this setup, the standard setup, is that we have a huge amount of MF. Like anything around 300 or more is fantastic. We also have 60 faster hit recovery, which is allowing us to hit another awesome breakpoint for the sorceress. Because like I said, the faster you can recover or get out of those scenarios where you're just holding that button down and teleporting and then you get stuck, the better. And the hit recovery really helps with those situations. Then we have 105 FCR, which is very strong. I recommend this playstyle, but 63 is definitely plenty good enough, which is the lower breakpoint. Uh, we'll cover more, I guess, now with Hardcore. First, pretty much all you have to do about Hardcore is... or you don't have to even, but all I would recommend is maybe just get 50% chance to block with Storm Shield on. So you kind of just swap out Storm Shield, and as you can see down here with the variants, like, you just tank up, you have as much damage reduction as you can, and you just become a super beast. So, and we also have 63 FCR here for that 50% damage reduction, which is like, Super, super tanky. Um, or at least 63, I should say. So, and then you can check those out and what the changes might be and whatnot. But you could also use Energy Shield if you are interested. Which me, you know, one point Energy Shield once you're a higher level isn't actually a bad idea. Because it allows you to become more tanky. Um, don't like full invest into like mana, I'd say, unless that's actually something you do want to do in that playstyle. It just makes you vulnerable against mana burn. Now, the extra energy shield, if you have a lot of regen, especially if you have insight or something with a mercenary, gives you a huge amount of tankiness as well. So, one point energy shield is an option. You can even do it on hardcore. Like, that is a thing. Just be aware of mana burn monsters. Don't rely too much on that stuff. So, let's go back here with the variants. The starter variant, it's pretty much the exact same playstyle, except you just skip immunities. And then you try to get a mercenary that has an insight that does some basic damage. And uh, the starter variant is just like level 75, if those are not familiar. But you just kind of use a mercenary and static and telekinesis. Um, telekinesis to stun, static to bring down their health, and then mercenary to finish them off. So like for Countess runs or for, you know, on occasion Neolithak runs here and there. Um, we can talk about Neolithak in a second. Uh, but like this is pretty solid. So it's pretty much the same playstyle. Standard, that's exactly what we're using. That's pretty much what I showed you. Magic Find, this one is actually a little bit different. This one stacks up to like 700 Magic Find or something. It's pretty nuts. So, and you basically just have a full inventory of small charms. And then you have three-piece towels. And three-piece towels gives you, you know, faster cast rate. It gives you amazing uh, Magic Find as well and then some actually decent resistances. So you can just look at all these variants. Again, link in the description for all this stuff. Um, but on swap, we have like, ist, 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 ist. <laughs> you know, all those, uh, all those things. And the reason why you'd actually want this is because players won. Okay, this is a players one build and I explained this here. But like, low HP monsters, or low player count is how I say it, I believe. Low HP monsters, you just want to stack as much MF as you can because you have plenty of damage because you're Blizzard Sorceress. So, and then every time you die, uh, something dies or is about to die, you just swap over to this for a boost in 130 MF versus this. If you kill something before then, it's fine. You have 80 MF here, but just a small min-max here. 
And then you could also use Infinity. Um, just because it has the MF and it helps with breaking some immunities. And then we use Scalders and Steel Skull for like more MF here. This, we use these things because like, well, if you're farming on lower player counts already with the setup, your Mercenaries MF plus your MF is equal to that. Like as long as, uh, or if your Mercenary kills something, it's his MF plus your MF. So you get a crazy amount of MF with this setup. It is more squishy. It is, you know, a little bit more expensive because you have to get a bunch of small MF charms and stuff like that. But, you know, you get the picture. The set build, actually relatively cheap. Um, all things considered. And it's pretty strong. You got the full tiles. It gives you a bunch of stats and stuff. And, uh, yeah. Honestly, the thing that's really cool about the variants is like, say you don't need that much damage, right? Say you don't want that much damage anymore, so you can just stack it MF. The main thing that's really important about uh, your farming is like, you find a nice ratio between magic find and clear speed. If you are sacrificing clear speed for magic find, it's not worth it at all. Like, make sure your clear speed is solid and then add MF. And then if you're seeing you have like too much damage you're more than one shotting then it's like all right maybe reduce some take some skillers off put some small charms on there like that so that's kind of the set build but that kind of just goes for everything as well um but we go back to the fortitude and adaro's visage builds here damage this one is very fun and you can get up to crazy numbers on blizzard damage like players eight just melt everything you're using nightwing's veil death's fathom Ormus Robes, and Snow Clash, right? These things are very strong. <laughs> like, your resistances do tank, so we actually do use, uh, uh, like, all res and 20 life here, if you can get it, or just type of, you know, as much resistances as you can, because, like, this is just pure damage. And Blizzard, when you stack this much plus skills, and this much damage, it just crushes face. And it's a lot of fun to play. So players eight games, they just melt. And then we already covered the hardcore section. Slap on a storm shield, maybe a crown of ages, call it a day. Um, then we have mechanics, which you can kind of take a look at in your, for yourself. If you want to see more how teleport works, if you want to see more about how blizzard works and the details, all these different things, you can check them out here. And then there's a summary at the end. And then eventually my YouTube video will be right here um, that we're creating right now. So that's kind of the guide here. I did say I wanted to cover like Neilthak because Neilthak is actually interesting. Um, in Detour, you can just grab the waypoint and that's fine. But like you can actually key farm very early and like set yourself up for success very quickly with the Blizzard Sorceress. This character was imported from LOD, and LOD you uh, needed to you needed to not grab the waypoint, otherwise the portal would disappear. And Pindle is a really solid farm with the Blizzard Sorceress, the guy I just killed. So it's definitely something to keep to you know be aware of. Go go and uh, kill Pindle. It's good for your health. Because he can drop pretty much everything except for three items, which is Azure Wrath, Hero's Might, and Arachnid's Mesh. So as long as you're okay with that, like, very good. Wait, okay, this is, uh, down here, I guess? There we go, waypoint. So yeah, we can grab waypoint, like I said, in D2R. But, like, Neilthak is sometimes cold immune, but he's not always cold immune. So, like, let's clear this out real quick. And let me explain why you can actually farm this. So one of the main dangers is actually corpse explosion from Nilthak, right? It's a big danger. But as you notice here, his ice spawn guys are cold immune. But he's not cold immune. Like sometimes he will be cold immune. He just kind of randomizes based on what he is. But like Blizzard Sword can go in snipe him with blizzard 
and then just like get out and there's minimal corpse explosions so something that's like really good for a strategy there and then when you're farming summoner go and uh you know hit up the chests a few times in the end you can drop up to a low rune why not you know why not hit them up and then like i said countess is always cold immune but you static you use telekinesis and then uh have your mercenary take them out with an insight or something so that's pretty much the Sorceress. I absolutely love this character. This is my second favorite character. I'd say in Diablo 2, I am definitely a meta person. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I love I love playing the fastest, strongest builds. But Blizzard Sorceress is great. And definitely check out the variants. Just because this is the standard variant that covers, like, kind of all well-roundedness. Like, you can take this build without changing any gear and farm efficiently no matter what. That's the function of the standard build that you see on the guide. Um, as far as specializations, you might want to players one farm. You might want to farm this place or that place. Yeah, also nature's peace is can be helpful too, but uh, you, you don't necessarily have a uh, nature's peace like uh, chat is saying. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this guide. Help it, uh, I hope it helped you guys understand a little bit more about the blizzard sorceress and like walk you through how it's played you can also just one real quick thing i'm not sure it's gonna stay but we do have firewall as an option apparently it's like really strong right now like kind of bugged strong so instead of fireball you could use firewall from what i've heard it's very strong haven't used it myself fireball's fine once you're high enough level for example i'm like 97 here in single player and I have all this gear, so, an infinity. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. You guys are beasts. Beasts.